Hey guys, what's up? This is Akash from Haven Spare. This is going to be the first video of a series of introduction to stock markets where we'll discuss both about investing as well as trading. But the main question we have to understand first is why do we invest or why do we trade? It actually comes down to the property of money. Just like how we go to a company, we work there, we get a salary, even our money has the ability to work. Meaning, if you put our 100 rupees note into any kind of a market, it could be the stock market, forex market, crypto market or whatever it is, that money can go there, work on its own. A 100 rupees note can work and get a salary of 10 rupees, 20 rupees. That 100 rupees will become 110, 120, 130 and so forth on the side. It's a passive source of income for you. And the more you invest, the more money you're going to make. So whenever you have a financial goal in your life, it can start with something as simple as your first scooter or your first bike, or you can go to your safe first car and it could be a first home, right? And it just doesn't stop there. In the future, you're gonna have a family, you're gonna have a kids, the kids have to go to college, there's a lot of tuition fees also coming in, and all of this requires a financial plan. Very simply put, start investing as early as you can, and you can make a lot of money which is gonna cover for all of your expenses, and we achieve a state of thing that we call financial freedom. But what is financial freedom? Now, financial freedom is not about having a luxurious car, a luxurious villa, or a very expensive lifestyle, no. It's not about that. Financial freedom is about having that financial independence where you have your enough income or wealth which can cover for your expenses for your entire life without having to be dependent on anyone else or being employed under anyone else. In simple words, it's about living life to the fullest without having to worry about money. Now that'd be a pretty good life, right? One of the few ways where you can achieve this is through investing and trading. Now investing is for everyone, meaning everyone should actually invest. It doesn't matter how old you are or how much you earn, you have to start investing as soon as you can. But trading is more like a business income or an active income, meaning that you have to put in your time and effort into it and you will get rewarded for it. Whereas investing is more like a passive source of income where you invest your money and you forget about it. Over a couple of years time, that money is gonna grow into a bigger amount of money and you're gonna profit from it. Trading and investing together can be your key to your financial freedom. So in this series of videos, we're gonna try to break down the world of investing and trading in a very small abstract manner. So first we'll start with the equity market or the stock market. And the first term that we'll define is what is a stock? A stock is a financial instrument that represents ownership in a company. When you buy a company stock, you're essentially buying a small part of that company, which is known as your shares of the company. When a person owns stock in a company, that individual is known as a shareholder. Now, the trick here is that you have to be a shareholder of a company which is set to grow in the future. If you are a shareholder of a company which is losing money right now and it's gonna go down the drains within the next 10 years of time, then you're definitely gonna lose the entire money that you invested. So as an investor in any company, you have to figure out which company is likely to keep growing in the future. To do this, we have a method called as fundamental analysis. Fundamental analysis is all about understanding the fundamentals of a company, meaning you'll be understanding how the company is, what is the market segment, what is the competitors in that market, what is the financial health of the company, is the company growing, is the profits increasing, what about the shareholders of the company, what about the directors of the company, does the company have a really good future, is the company a monopoly, these are some of the big questions that comes under fundamental analysis and after you identify which companies are good for a particular sector growth or even the long term run, you invest your money into those companies only. So the next question that comes up is what is a stock exchange or a stock market itself, right? A stock market or stock exchange is the place where all the publicly listed companies are available and individual investors like you and me, we can choose which stock to buy or sell. Most of the people will have a different point of view of a particular company. Some people may think this company is gonna go up. Some people may think the same company is gonna go down. So the stock market is a place where people can exchange these ideas and take trades based on their conviction or their point of view. Now that's pretty confusing, right? To understand this better, let's take the example of TCS. Now TCS is facing a succession issue and most of its upper level management is actually leaving the company for personal reasons. It seems like the leadership vacuum that is created is heavily weighing down the company right now. So as a result, the stock price dropped to 4,000 rupees from all the way from 4,500 rupees. So whenever there are new reports regarding the TCS management change, the stock prices will also react to it. Now assume that there are two investors. Let's call them T1 and T2. The T1 investor's point of view is that the company is going to find a hard time replacing its CEO. So because of this, the stock price is going to crash even further down. So if T1 is trading as per his point of view, then he should be selling the TCS stock. At the same time, T2 investors have a different point of view. According to these investors, they feel that the stock price has overreacted to the succession change and they believe that TCS will find a really good CEO in the coming days and the stock price is likely to go up after that point of time. So if T2 set of investors trades as per their point of view, they'll be expecting the stock price to move up since the management will soon find the CEO. So these guys will be buyers of the stock TCS. So the T1 set of investors will be looking to sell their stock and so they will place orders at 4,000 rupees to sell their stock to the stock exchange. 
whereas the T2 set of investors, they'll be looking to buy the same stock at 4,000 rupees. So they will place orders to the stock exchange to buy at 4,000 rupees. The T1 and T2 set of investors will place their orders to the stockbroker. The stockbroker will send this information to the stock exchange. Now the stock exchange is responsible to make sure that these two orders get matched and it gets executed. So this is the primary job of a stock market, that is to create a marketplace for buyers and sellers in order to trade their points of view. And finally, we have the primary market and the secondary market. In the primary market, companies issues out stocks and bonds to the public for the first time. That's why it's called the primary market. A popular example of the primary market is the IPOs, that is initial public offerings. This is the process by which a private limited company becomes a public limited company, meaning it gets listed on the stock exchange. If you look at companies like say Cred, Baiju's or Razorpay, these are not available on the stock market. That's because these companies are still private limited companies. Now these companies, their end goal is to get listed on the stock market. These private limited companies basically cannot raise money from the public directly. Meaning if I want to invest in Baiju's right now, I cannot because there's no Baiju's listed on the stock market. So a company gets listed on the stock market through this process called IPO. There's a lot of process and regulation behind it. But once a company does its IPO, it will be finally available to the public to buy. That's when people like you and me can buy into stocks like Cred, Baidu's and everything. So IPOs are actually festivals for both investors as well as the company. The company, once it does its IPO, it can raise money from the public anytime they want. And similarly, investors that's like you and me, IPOs are great money-making opportunities where you will find drastic movements in the price within a few one-week time itself. So if a really good company with really good fundamentals are coming out with their IPO, these are usually good investment opportunities for investors to step in and they can make a lot of money within a very small period of time. A popular example is IRCTC. IRCTC, as you know, it's a government-owned company where it's a monopoly railway ticketing system and no one else actually has a similar stock or company in that particular field. So IRCTC is a monopoly and if you see the stock price of IRCTC, it got listed from 120 rupees and it went all the way to 2000 rupees in a span of two years of time. So these are the examples of primary markets and for secondary markets, it's the normal stock exchange. The secondary market is nothing but a normal stock exchange where we can buy and sell these securities. So after its IPO, IPO is considered as its primary market. And once its IPO is done, it gets listed on the stock exchange. That is known as your secondary market. So thank you for watching the first part of the eight part video series for introduction to stock market. Make sure you watch all the videos in the series so that you can start earning money from directly from the stock market. Also, please make sure you subscribe to our channel if you find this content informative. Thank you for watching.